dynamic headers that we talked about last time. I won't go into that in detail here. But this last one, the middle bit, is going to be the norm.dist of the top part, which is the which is going to be the, the higher x, the 133. Uh, and in the mean standard deviation, it needs to be cumulative minus the norm.dist of the lower x, the 109, the same mean standard deviation, it also needs to be cumulative. And then if we converted that to, uh, or this, I can also think about it uh, this way, one minus the two, the two results that we got uh, up top. In other words, uh, if I look at my data up top, we did P of X is greater than 133. Uh, P of X uh, is greater is less than or equal to 109. So if I look at those two, and I think about this, I guess I'm going to say, okay, P of X was greater than uh, the the 109, and less or I'm sorry, <laughs> let me do, let me do that again. What were my two P P of X is greater than or equal to 133 and less than or equal to 109. So those are the two tails, right? Those are the two ends. Greater than the 133, less than the 109. Those are the two blue sides. So if this the whole thing adds up to 100%, and then I have these two blue sides, so I can subtract that out. I can say 100% minus those two. In other words, I'm going to say this is going to be the 30.58 plus the 6.05 minus 100%, and I should get that middle part of the 63.37. So that's another way to kind of envision that. And then I could say, okay, the Z scores. So what if I had the Z scores? I can do this with the Z calculations, getting to the Zs uh, in the same way, I won't, I won't, you know, it's going to be the 133 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation will give us the Z's. And then you can do the Z in the same way, norm.s.dist with the Z scores, cumulative minus norm.s.dist with the Z scores of uh, the lower Z score, and you'll get to the same thing. You can also do the same thing with the Z scores that we got to, to get to that same 63 37. So this is the probability uh, of the lower end. So before I before I do that, just note that when I look at this graph, then this last bit, then is P of X is less than or equal to 133. And over the 109, we have our dynamic header that we'll show how to do in Excel. And one way I can do this now is instead of me uh, redoing this whole graph based on the the information to the left i can say well look i'm going to i'm going to sum these two up because this is the upper and lower ends and i'm going to say if so i want you to do an if and then i'm going to sum up these two if the sum of that is greater than 0 then what do we want you to do we want you to put a we want you to put nothing over here double quotes if not then we want you to put the the uh, the number, or then we want you to put the P of X. So by doing that, I can then get this middle part that's being graphed. So now we're graphing that middle part. So the point of this is that now we have this kind of one graph that might be able to help us uh, and be dynamic to answer any of these questions. We can kind of say, okay, the high end is over here and I can kind of use this graph to envision if I want to look at the tail on the high end I can use the same graph if I wanted to ask a question on the low end and then if I want to ask a question about the middle I can use the same graph to basically plot the middle point because by the way I'm entering it into the system here I can I can enter either I'm going to I'm going to say that this is always the you know the top and the low point and this is going to be the middle so we'll do that in excel if that's something of interest so to, to try to to try to get kind of one graph that'll be a little bit dynamic once you put it together so that you can visualize multiple of these kind of questions now another question that you, that we haven't really looked at as much is like the probability of the lower end what if we know the probability of the lower end is 45 percent and i'm trying to then find 
the x value or the z value. So in other words, I know that this, uh, this probability of this end uh, is, I know that that area under the curve and I'm trying to find the point then of the x value or the z value, this value on the x. So if we ask a question like that, then we can use a formula which would be norm dot inverse inv and then the data input will be picking up the probability instead of the x value and then the same mean and standard deviation and that will give us then the x value same with the z the z value so if i know the 45 percent i'm now backing into the z value right it's like kind of reversing the algebra but doing it with a formula so now we're going to solve for the inverse norm dot s dot inverse and now all i need is the probability which is the 45 percent because the mean and the standard devi deviation are kind of included in that z value calculation and that gives us our, our z value of the 0.13 the 0.13 and 125 you'll note if i look at the graph so the 0.13 and the 125 would be somewhere around here right they're like they're the, kind of the same they're at the same point or if i look at 125 over here and i look at the z value 125 and 0 0.18 about right it's between because there's rounding involved so so there is that and then we're going to say okay what's the probability of the upper end so notice that these two are kind of the inverse so 45 and 55 add up to 100 what if we're looking what if i know then like the upper end like this blue area this isn't the exact number but you know the upper end then then how do i back into like the related the related x or z so we can say okay that's going to be another inverse but now you'd have to take the norm dot inverse same thing but the probability now is going to be 100 percent or one minus the probability here so one minus the 55 and then comma the mean and standard deviation and that'll give you that'll give you the the uh, x and then if you wanted the z value same concept we would pick, take the norm dot s dot inverse one minus the the 55 and then you get to to this value and they're the same numbers because of we chose the 45 percent and uh and the uh 55 percent so so obviously if you're saying the the probability of something that is the lower end 45 percent means that the upper end is the 55 percent which means you end up on the same x value uh which is going to be the 125 and uh the 61.